Welcome to another riveting episode of my prime density formula. Uh, I had some insights into it the last couple of weeks, so I thought I would share them here. Uh, firstly, you might say, well, Li is a way better approximation for the density of primes that we know of, uh, which may be the case, but I want to find the formula that's best using arithmetic. Um, I believe it will give a more intuitive sense of how the primes work. Um, so yeah, just listen to me rant for a few minutes here. I might be 100% correct, I might be 0% correct, but if I'm 10% correct and that helps someone get an intuitive sense on how the primes work and that leads to a big discovery, then my job here is done. All right, so before I go deep down the rabbit hole of my thoughts, I thought I'd just show you some numbers here to give me some credibility so you would actually stay for the next seven minutes or so. Um, so yeah, there's my equation. So let's set x to 10 to the 200. There's the Li answer. As you can see, mine is pretty accurate. It's 831, 826. Now just to show that it has it, E is the base, if we minus 0.1 from E, you can see the number drastically changes, way lower. If we add just 0.1 to E, it goes well over. Okay? And there's obviously just ln of x minus 1, way different. And this one's even way further off. Okay? So... And here is 10 to the 300, same thing. You get 5,005 here at the end, 5,004, pretty close. And 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1 and plus 0 0.1 are way off. And these two are way further away. Um, also an extra here, if you put minus one, uh, minus 2.5 right here next to the ln of x, it pretty much is equal after 10 to like 10 to the 100, I believe. Uh, Desmos doesn't even see the difference in them. I don't know what that means. I may have a clue to that later, but I'm not sure yet. So now this first part I'm going to discuss here is, is the most obscure part of this whole talk. Uh, I'll show evidence for it later. So if you think this is a lot of wishy-washy stuff, just bear with me. Um, so yeah, it's about unbounded and bounded infinities. Now, this is something you may have thought of when you were six years old or 10 years old or whatever, and then thought, that's strange, and then moved on. But to me, it's a... It's very fundamental in prime numbers uh, and the Riemann hypothesis and all that stuff. Um, and it's simply the difference between the two. I mean, in an unbounded infinity, which is zero to infinity, uh, we have integers. And yeah, we could, but we can't find ratios. We can't find the halfway point between zero and infinity or a quarter. Okay? Now, in a bounded infinity, which would be an example of 0 to 1, or 0 to anything, really, you can make the boundaries whatever you want. We've gained the power of ratios, and we can divide it up equally. But now we've lost the integers. You can't find an integer on here. You can't find 5, for instance. Um, and to me, this is why prime numbers are unpredictable, because you need both of these informations to predict primes. You see, for example, if you land on a number, say five, and you want to check if it's prime, you have to look back to zero, the singularity or the pole, whatever you want to call it, to find out if it's prime, okay? You can't look that way to get all the answers. That's why you can't, that's the only way is to look this way. You can see that they're patterns, right? And to me, the primes are unpredictable simply because it's a combination of all patterns. And what you're left with is a thing that isn't a pattern. So no matter what formula you come up, you'll never find a formula that always predicts primes. Um, as for the bounded, yeah, but we can't do anything with that with primes because there's no integers. But if we could, so say instead of when we divide a bounded infinity by two, instead of it being a half, we actually got every multiple of two in it. We can make an infinite sith. And all the prime numbers would reveal themselves. So if we could somehow make a sith out of the bounded infinity, we could be able to predict the primes. But to me, that is fundamentally impossible. So this isn't a video about how to prove prime number, how prime numbers work. It's more about how it's unprovable. So why I think my equation works so well is because it does its best to combine these two types of infinity. No, it will never be perfect because it never will be because, once again, fundamentally, they could never combine, right? You could never... It's like 
two galaxies can collide, right? None of the stars are gonna actually collide. So there's never, you're never gonna find integers on here. You're never gonna find the ratios on here, but we can do our best to try. So if we take my equation and set it like this, which means the same thing, I like this term written this way because it gives a much more intuitive sense of how, what's going on here, okay? So we set x to one, the equation simplifies to this, and now you can see how this relates to that, okay? This one relates to this e in exponential growth. This one, this e, relates to the one in exponential decay. Okay, so they're going to mesh together like that to give a decent approximation. Um, so another thing that I noticed is that if we uh, hunt for how many primes are between different exponents of e, okay, so e to the 10 minus e to the 9, there's this many primes in between there. And here is e to the 11 minus e to the 10, this many. And we start dividing these these. Now, obviously, you can see what's happening here. It's kind of obvious. It goes to E. Okay, I don't know. Here's a big example for you. And yeah, it goes to I've tried huge numbers. I don't know if this has ever been proven before. Um, if it has been proven, that would really help my case here. Um, if it hasn't, um, it's pretty obvious, so someone should get on that. <laughs> it may be pretty easy to do, and it could be a pretty cool, cool, cool discovery. Okay, but this is very important to what I'm about to show you. So the next question is, we have this tending to E. At what rate? What are the differences between each one of these to get to the next one? All right? So we want to divide these and these all together. And we can generalize that to this equation which equals this as well. We'll just do this because it's a little easier. Okay. So if we set X to 98, we get this as our answer. If we take the square root of, uh, well, the, the 98th root of E <laughs> divided by the 99th root of E, we get a very similar number. Okay. Now, for some reason, it's actually, if we minus 0.5 here and add 0.5 here, it actually works a lot better. I'm not sure about why that is. I think that's related to that minus 2.5 I spoke earlier. Um, but yeah, that's a detail that we can figure out later. Um, so yeah, x to the 700 for this equation equals this. And if we set this to, you know, 700, 0.5, whatever, you can see they're getting a lot closer. And x to 9,998, like these numbers are ridiculously close. Okay. Here's even a bigger number. And there you go. So this one is exponential growth and this one is exponential decay. So now all of this can be generalized in this bizarre looking equation, but Let's take a moment here to understand what's going on here. This has to do with prime numbers and an unbounded infinity. All right, these this is just how they're distributed in zero to infinity. This has nothing to do with that. This is something that takes place within E itself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're completely different, but it works unbelievable. So here's some examples for you. You take this equation li to e to this ridiculous number gives you this and the root of e of that number is this i think they change this is all the same up here and right here is where it changes okay so we're generating pretty much the exact same number two completely different ways so let's try to get a visual representation of what's going on here, right? So we have E, here's one. And well, there's the square root of E, there's the cube root of E, and it keeps going like that. That is how we're gonna divide up this bounded infinity, okay? And eventually, at its limit, it will, this line will be right here at one, okay? And that ratio is one to E, which if you remember from earlier, is where this is tended to. 
Okay, so this is the final ratio. Like if you combine all these primes in here and make it one, times it by E, you'll get the amount here. So this is the last iteration or the last prime density ratio of the numbers. Okay, so just to show you how well it works, here is the equation of 10 to the 1 million divided by Li of the same. That's how close it is. Okay, here it is to this big number. As you can see, it's just getting closer and closer. Uh, and here is just minus one instead of my equation. You can see the nines stop here. My nines go to there. So we've come to the end of the video. Um, that's all I got for now. Uh, like I said, if you have any input or even know how to prove such a thing, let me know. Uh, but like I said, I don't think it is provable. I think this falls into that strange like physics realm of you don't know when and where, where a number is, you know, it's impossible. Um, but yeah, if this may already be a thing, but it's, you know, over passed over because it's not as good as Li. But to me, if it is a thing, there's a good chance you never heard of it, which is awesome because if this gives you a better intuitive sense of how the primes work and that leads someone to, you know, figuring out the Riemann hypothesis or something crazy, then that would be extremely cool. So yeah, any help with this or someone knows who's really good with computers and knows how to graph such a thing, um, yeah, please let me know. Thanks for watching.